Hey everyone, you're home on the tools of James and today we are building the ultimate workbench. Let's, uh, let's not muck around, let's jump straight into it. Okay, let's look at some of the timber that we're gonna use for our work table. So what I got here is some 90 by 45 uh, pine, or it was treated pine. Uh, I've just ran it through my thickness uh, to clean it up because I do intend uh, I'm putting a clear finish uh, on, on this table so it looks nice. Uh, I've also got some 90 by 90 um, pine uh, posts, um, same deal there, I ran them through my thicknesser. Uh, it's just a bit of a cheaper way for me to do it, I've got the machine. If you haven't got it, you can absolutely buy dressed all round timber. Uh, for the top, I'm gonna use uh, 30 mil thick ply board. Um, I'm gonna use two sheets of this, I've got one sitting here now. Uh, it's 2.25 meters uh, long, so that's gonna be our top. So we've got our timber, we're ready to go. I'm gonna show you some of the cuts. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I make the, uh, the legs for the table. So what I've got is I've cut my uh, 90 by 90 pine uh, down to 80 centimeters. So the reason I've done that uh, at that height is that by the time I put casters on it uh, and it gets the thickness of the tabletop uh, on top of it as well, it's gonna come out at around 95 centimeters. Now, why 95 centimeters? Uh, the DeWalt saw that I've got and the saw stand that I um, originally bought that came with the uh, saw uh, sits at about 95 and I actually like that height. Uh, I'm quite a tall guy, I'm 6'2", uh, so that suits my height. Um, you could build the table to any height you liked based on uh, your comfort level. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how we're gonna uh, prep this and the, the principle will be the same for all the legs that we make. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do dado cuts in this. So this is face cuts. Uh, and the reason I'm doing that is just to make it nice and flush and look nice and neat. I'm gonna do it with a miter saw. There's a million different ways to get this cut uh, and get the same effect. But we're going to do it with a miter saw because it, uh, it's quick, it's easy, uh, and it's just a work table in here. It's not you know, you know high-end high joinery that uh, you might have on a dining room table in the house. So uh, let's have a look at doing the dado cut, and then we'll jump over and have a look at some assembly. Okay, so I'll show you what I'm doing here. So I'm going to take my, um, my dado or my rebate out of this end here for a piece of timber to lock in and sit into it nice at flush height here. So I've got my uh, mill down piece. Remember, I, I ran this through the thickness, so this is the one I want to measure off, not one that I haven't, or I'm going to get my measurements wrong. Basically, just I've put that on the end there, and I've drawn my mark. So I've got my grey lead line there. I'm good to go. Now, because I'm on the miter saw, what I want to do is I'm just going to put a spacer at the back. So a bit of uh, 90 by 45, nice and straight, and I stick it in the back of the saw, and that'll ensure my saw goes all the way through. Now, on this saw, I'm going to pan up. On this saw, it has a depth gauge here with a, with a screw type mechanism. Now I've already got that dialed into the right height. Now if I want to cut only to a certain depth, I'm just pulling that across and you'll see that this screw jams. Now the trick to getting the right height is while I've got my 90 by 45 sitting in there, I'm just bringing down my saw just until it rests just above the top uh, of that uh, piece of timber and then I know I've got my depth right so that will um, that means I can start my cut so I'm going to make a series of cuts uh, starting right on the line where I need to be and I'm just going to cut all the way along probably take uh, maybe 20 cuts uh, and that should all all come up a treat so let's take a look at that So this here is what you're left with after doing that, uh, just some fine bits. So we can just basically just snap those out like so. And then I'm just taking my chisel and I'm just gonna clean up the last few bits. So just cleaning up the last few bits like so. And I'll, look, I'll clean it all up with a bit of a sander as well and make it all nice and neat and flush uh, before I assemble. But you get the general idea. Uh, and then if I take a piece of my uh, 90 by 45, you'll see that it just slots in nice and beautiful. And that's how we're gonna do the rest of our legs. Okay, I've cut all my pieces to size and uh, I've pieced everything together as it sits. Uh, now the, the, the cross brace part of the frame, I have actually glued together just with some tight bond three. Um, so it's all nice and, uh, and sewed together, but I have not put uh, my, uh, my cross beams or anything together yet. Uh, this is because I'm gonna true up the bottom of it with the piece of ply. So strategically I've placed 
uh, each post 600 apart, which is the width of my ply, just so I could run a nice one clean sheet that I only have to nip a little bit off the end. Um, so I'm gonna put the ply in first and that should trim me up and make sure I'm nice and square. Uh, and then I'll glue uh, these into positions. I'm not, uh, I'm not using any screws on this frame at this point, um, just going to be gluing it together. So I'll give you a bit of a look at, uh, at the construction going together here. So I need to cut my ply to size uh, for the bottom of the, uh, the, the table. Uh, now I don't have a track saw, maybe a future purchase, but something you can do if you don't have a track saw is mark out where you need to cut your, your timber. In this case, it's too long for my miter saw to cut through it. Uh, you can just go at it blindly with a circular saw if you want, if you're good enough. Uh, I'm not good enough, so I'm gonna use a, uh, just a bit of 90 by 45, clamp to the bench, and it's just offset the amount. And basically I get my own track saw, because all I have to do is keep the circular saw hard up against it, make my cut, and I should get a perfectly straight cut through my timber. So I'm gonna do that, and then we can get to the assembly of the table. Okay, so some good progress. We've got the, uh, we've got the bottom ply panel glued in and clamped. We've got the whole thing glued uh, and dry, uh, the rest of the frame. Uh, what we're gonna do now, I'm just gonna put a couple of cross braces in now. I'm gonna use some screws for this one and do some pocket hole screws and just put some cross bracing for, uh, for our bench top to screw down to. So I'll show you the pocket hole screws going in uh, and then we'll move on to the next step. So the pocket hole screw is pretty clever. Uh, I've got myself this jig here. It's uh, by a company called Craig. Um, quite, quite simple. So pretty much uh, just clamp your jig at the end of your 2 before um, in position there. And then it comes with uh, this special drill bit, the jig. So you can see it's sort of like a step a bit. It's got a pilot hole and then it drills in the hole for the, for the pocket screw. So I'll show you how it goes. Go. All right, we've got our cross beam in place. I uh, just clamped it in. You can see the pocket hole screws there. And all we're going to do um, is we've got this bit here, and we're going to take our pocket hole screws and just in we go, like so. That easy for professional look. So we're going to put this workbench on uh, casters now. I want to be able to move it around the, uh, the shed. So what I've done here is I've bought these heavy duty nylon wheel casters. Now, these ones here have got the, the locking wheel, which is pretty cool. Uh, you, want, you, know, you want your work table, especially with a saw uh, built into the table to, to not go anywhere. Uh, so what I'm going to do is have each corner, so the four of them, I'm going to have the, uh, I'm going to have the caster with a lockable, and then the ones in the middle, I'm just going to have rollable lockers. Now, to, uh, to fasten these down to the bottom of the post, I'm gonna use these coach bolts, these are M8 coach bolts straight through there, and I'm gonna pilot drill them. Um, I'm sort of a bit worried about the, uh, the bottom of the post cracking, so I'm gonna go through and put all these in, uh, and then we'll take a look at uh, putting the bench top on. Okay, so we're on wheels, now it's time to turn our attention to the bench tops. Now, uh, what I'm sitting on here is some 90 by 45 pine that I've just milled down to 30 mil. Uh, to make my top for my saw. Uh, and then what you wanna do is make sure you've taken your measurements for your saw. Now in this case, I'm using a DeWalt uh, table saw. Uh, so basically I've measured the width to the end that the table saw is and the, uh, the length of the table saw as well. Now I wanna do a couple of test fits and just make sure that the, uh, that the fence on the DeWalt saw isn't snagging or anything. Cause uh, I'm, I'm tipping I'll probably have to route a little bit of uh, timber off to make sure that, that fence glides nice and smooth. Uh, and then we'll test fit up our bench top uh, and cut it to size. So let's go and take a look at that. Okay, so I've got my saw sitting in place. Now what I wanna do is make sure that I can use this fence system, which on the DeWalt here and the Milwaukee ones works on this lever and ratchet system. What I wanna make sure is that this fence will, has clearance uh, between my table. Now I'm gonna run the outside part of the fence so it runs past the edge of the table. So I won't have any problems with clearance on this side, but this side is where I'll need to pay some attention to. So uh, I'll zoom in here so you can see it, but this fence actually hits. You can see here that it hits the, uh, hits the cross beam. 
and it's also just clipping the, the post at the other edge where I want it. Now the other thing that you'll need to, uh, to make allowances for is to make sure that the saw itself uh, can do your uh, angle cuts, so it, it'll do a beveled cut. Uh, and make sure that you've got clearance in the bottom of your table there for your dust extraction, etc. when you go on the 45 degree angles, uh, so you've got clearance. So that's another thing to keep an eye out for, uh, for your saw. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark out where I need to take some cuts here in the, uh, in the cross beams. I'm gonna make my cuts, and then I can test fit up the bench top. All right, we wanna join our bench tops together now. So basically what I'm gonna use is these, they call them bench top joiners. Um, I'll give you a closer look at them. They're, uh, they're pretty simplistic and they're used for pulling two bench top table tops together. Um, so, you know, I use these inside when you're doing uh, kitchen bench tops, etc. I'm gonna do the same thing here. And what we need for that is a, I'm using a 32 mil hinge bit, or you might hear them called a forced in a bit. Um, and basically drilling out a hole in this in both sides. This will sit in it and pull it tight. I'll show you what I'm talking about. will make a bit more sense. Okay, so I had both parts of my bench top pushed together and I've just marked them. So I'm gonna do this one side first. So basically I'm gonna get my, um, my bit and I'm gonna hold it in the middle of that shocking line that I've drawn there. And I'm, in, I'm probably oh, a centimeter in from the edge here. And I'm gonna go about sort of three quarters of the way into the board like so. So that's pretty good depth there. You can see it's made bored a nice hole. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna change over my drill bits just to a standard drill bit. Uh, just a little trick, so. Just so it's easier on my chiseling, is I'm just gonna drill in from the edge here. I'm just gonna drill in like so. My table doesn't roll away. Couple of drill holes. Another one, doesn't need to be too pretty. And then pretty much, we can just come in from the chisel. Like so. So obviously I'll clean that up, that's a bit, that's a bit rough and ready. But uh, I'll give you a look at how these work. So basically, one part is gonna lock in like so. And this other part will make a hole on my matching side. It'll go in like so. And as I tighten that up, if I can get it on the thread there, as I tighten that up, it'll pull the two tops of the bench top together. So we'll go and do that and we'll come back and have a look. Okay, so our two pieces of tabletop are joined together without the connectors. Uh, I've put some glue in and I've pulled it nice and tight. So I've, I've used three on this job. So the tabletop's ready to be, uh, to be test fit. Now, just for the frame, I've added some 19 mil by 42 mil um, pine and I've just glued that in. I've done it right around the edge of my framework. Now, uh, the reason for this is I want a skinny and timber to be able to drill up through into my bench top to fasten the bench top to. So we're gonna test fit the bench uh, into position. And then we're going to have a look at doing some hardwood dressing around the outside of our bench top. Let's go. All right, I've just finished up putting uh, a hardwood edge around my tabletop. And uh, the way I've done that is I've just used glue, uh, more or less, with a, uh, a countersink bit here uh, in my drill. So pre-drilled um, some holes in the fascia of the timber. And I put some 50 mil uh, wood screws through it. Now the screws are only temporary. Uh, they're merely just there to hold it in place while the glue dries. Uh, once the glue's dried, I'm coming along with a 9.5 mil um, drill bit. Uh, pulling the screw out, drilling a hole at 9.5, and I've just cut up um, some 9.5 millimeter dowels um, with my bandsaw. So it's, it's cheaper to buy it in a big stick, and I just cut it through my bandsaws. Uh, and then putting a bit of glue on this and pushing them in a place where the screws were, so it gives you a nice neat finish, no screws in the bench top. And when I come to putting some T-track uh, into the bench top, I won't have any fears of, uh, of hitting any screws while I'm doing that, so uh, double whammy. So, that's what I've done with the tabletop there. We're gonna have a look at the tabletop getting screwed uh, onto the table, and then we're getting close to give it a final sand and, uh, and, and a bit of a, a cabothane finish. So 
let's move on to putting the tabletop on. Okay, so we've fastened down our bench top. Uh, now what I wanna do is put in some T-Track in the top of my tabletop. So what I've got here is some, uh, some T-Track, so it's made out of aluminium. Uh, and I've also got an intersection. So I've got four lengths of T-Track and I've got uh, an intersection. So I'm gonna show you how that goes in and it's, it's really cool stuff actually, I'll show you how it works. Uh, I've got my, uh, my palm router here. I'm going to uh, clamp a board uh, to give me a straight edge across where I want to go. Uh, and then I'm going to route my, uh, my groove to fit my T-track into my tabletop. Now, a couple of things to consider when you do this. Um, I have put screws uh, up into the bottom uh, of the tabletop. And I've also got those uh, steel joiners, tabletop joiners underneath as well. Uh, so just being sure that you know where they are before you go and put your router into it and you know potentially hit, uh, hit metal with your router, which is not going to end well. So I'll give you a bit of a look at this, uh, this stuff going in and then we're going to finish off this, uh, this tabletop. Let's go. Okay, so we've made some dust and we've cut our groove for our T-Track. Uh, now I've cleared all that off and uh, we're going to give the top of the tabletop a coat of a Cabothane Clear. Now the one I'm using is a Cabot's one. It's an oil-based um, polyurethane. I'm using the oil base because it'll sink into the timber a little bit better than the, uh, than the water base one. Uh, and this table is going to cop a fair beating. So I want it to be nice and durable finish. And basically you're putting a plastic uh, film over the top of the table to protect it. So uh, we're going to give this a coat before we put our tea track in, let it dry. Uh, and then we're going to fit out the rest of the table and finish off. So let's go. Okay, we've put the finish on the top of our bench top. Now uh, I want to do the install of the T-Track. So what I'm going to start with here is our, um, is our junction. So you can see here we've got the kit, comes with the four pieces. Now these are already um, countersunk and screwed, ready to go. Uh, and you get these little countersunk screws um, ready to go. Now the, the tracks, um, the, the long lengths, now they're not pre-drilled at all. So I'm going to have to drill those uh, to the right size and they'll need to be cut. Now I'm going to cut these uh, with an old circular saw, or it's actually an old miter saw that's got a bit of a dull blade, um, so I'm not going to be using it for cutting my wood or anything like that uh, after this. So uh, I will need to cut some of them to size, which I'll show you. Uh, but the install of these is really easy. Uh, they just, you can see here that the, uh, the junction just all butts into each other really nicely. And uh, I'll just screw those in place and uh, we'll have our T track in place and I'll show you, uh, I'll show you what it's all about. So I'll give you a bit of a look at the, uh, the purpose of the, uh, the T-Track in here and uh, you can buy a magnitude of accessories for these things and I've got, uh, I've got some cam clamps here and they're pretty cheap too, they're about 20 bucks, um, 25 bucks for a pair. Um, I got these ones from Timbercon uh, which is an AU website, um, they're really really cool. So what you do, um, basically it's got this T-Track uh, bolt acceptor in here and it just slides just slide simply into your uh, into your track. So we're, we're in there nice and tight. You take your workpiece, cam up with that. You put your workpiece work piece wherever you want it. Do up your clamp, clamp it nice and tight. Put my other one in. I'm going to go doubly secure. Tighten them up, and there you go. Not going anywhere. So. Pretty cool. Um, there's a heap of different clamps you can get. You can get ones that stick up. You can get lights that go into it. And you know, for your workpiece, you can get things to hold your uh, your dust extraction while you do it. You can get uh, these little things called biscuits that sit in there and keep your workpiece elevated off the bench top for if you want to route around it or or um, varnish or whatever you want to do. So really, really cool and a great addition to your uh, to your workbench. Well, okay, we're on the home stretch now. Uh, I've got my table saw in place uh, and where it needs to uh, where it needs to sit in relation to the table now. What I want to do for it to stop it sliding around is I'm going to put some stops uh, at the front of the feet here and at the front of the feet here. I'm also going to put it on a non-slip mat. So uh, that'll stop the saw moving backwards and forwards side to side. 
because uh, it's really it's not going to lift up anywhere the way it's uh, the way it's sitting on the table. So we'll get that done, and then uh, and then we'll finish up. There you go, there's our workbench saw table uh, complete. Uh, probably took me a weekend uh, in all in all to build this. Uh, I'm really happy with the finish and uh, will certainly get uh, get plenty of use from me. So uh, that's, that's it, I hope you really enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to the channel, drop a like and uh, some comments in there are always welcome. I'm off to the next project, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.